We're going to continue to work with non-destructive edits and then try and improve this image of Stonehenge being on this cliff. So let's go ahead and zoom in on our image. Again, I press the letter Z so I can call up the zoom tool. And you'll notice, I'm going to turn off the visibility on Stonehenge. There's this big rock on the cliff, and Stonehenge is just kind of laying haphazardly on top of it, and it doesn't look natural. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my mask on the Stonehenge layer. You'll notice that when I have the layer selected, there's a little square highlighting it. When I have the mask selected, it's got a little square highlighted. So you need to be careful that you have the right one selected. I'm going to call it my brush tool, and I'm going to paint with a black brush on my mask. And what that's going to do is it's going to add to my selection. I'm going to go ahead and make a little smaller brush. And where I saw that rock, I'm going to paint on my Stonehenge mask to bring back that rock. And what that does is it now makes Stonehenge look like it's actually embedded in the rock and it's behind that one rock that was quite large. And I can go around all the posts or the columns here that Stonehenge columns, the Stonehenge stones, and I can run my brush along there with a black brush again, um, hiding parts of my image. So if I turn off my visibility, you can see the whole image is gone. I can see where I'm putting my Stonehenge. If I turn off the visibility on Ocean, you can see where I'm actually putting holes in my Stonehenge on my mask layer to allow parts of the ground on that cliff to come through on the rocks of Stonehenge. To make it look more real. So again I'm going to just click and drag. So I'm look, working with a black brush right now and basically masks work with black and white or shades there in between. So if I were to change this to a white brush by clicking my swap tool or pressing the letter X on my keyboard, I could click and bring back the Stonehenge and I have still have that other part of my image with the Stonehenge that I had on the other document with the trees and the ground and I could actually bring those back as well which wouldn't look good in this picture because we don't see any trees so again black and white on a mask layer and we can begin to blend these two images together I just switch back to black by pressing the letter X on my keyboard X swaps the two colors on my tools panel, changing the foreground and the background color. So that looks a little better. Now that I've got them more blended and if we had some areas like up here if I want to continue to clean those with my mask selected I can go back to my polygonal lasso and I can now come in and continue cleaning up any areas that stand out and aren't hidden perhaps by this new background. So I'm going to quickly do a selection here just to show you. Again, I'm working on my mask. I'm going to go back to my brush and I'll paint with my black brush along that selection and it improves my selection. I'm going to click on my double click on my hand tool to go back out and you can see now with that rock formation that was already on the cliff being a part of the Stonehenge, it looks a little more real. But you'll notice that the color differentiation between what we brought in and the picture we already had, they kind of don't go together. So we're going to try and improve that again in a non-destructive way. So I'm going to click on my panel, my properties panel here, on the extra tool panel. And I'm going to open that up. I still have my mask selected. And down at the bottom of that panel, you can see where I can click on this little icon, this load selection for mask. It's just some dotted lines, your marching ants. If I click on that, you'll see it brings back my selection. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to close the properties panel. I'm going to add an adjustment layer. Because of that selection, remember, anything that's selected is what will then have the next thing I do apply to it. It won't affect any other part of the image, just the selected region. 
on my adjustment panel, I'm going to click on the hue saturation icon here. When I click on that, it now becomes a part of my properties panel. You'll see I now have a mask option and a properties option so I can see what's happening on my layers. And what I'm doing is again only going to apply to the Stonehenge image. You'll notice that a mask is added to the hue saturation layer right above Stonehenge and because it's got that mask it's only going to affect the stone. So I'm going to go ahead and work with saturation and lightness. If I adjust the hue, what happens with hue is it changes the color and I don't want to go for that effect so much because I don't want it to be standing out. I want it to blend in. So I'm going to adjust my saturation. I'm going to bring it down a negative number. And as I bring it down, you can see the tone starts to change. The saturation of the image starts to change. It starts to look more like the image I have behind it. So let me go to maybe around a negative 14. And then I'm going to go down to the lightness. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to bring that to a negative number. Again, I can just click and drag. And I can find an area that I like that where I think it starts to look more like the image that's being placed in. So it looks like maybe negative 14. And I can click on my properties panel to collapse that. And we can again click on our visibility icon, our little eyeball on the hue saturation layer to see our before and after, see what kind of change that's made. And you can see how that hue saturation mask influencing only the Stonehenge layer has improved that image to make it actually look like it could possibly be there. So we've done some non-destructive edits by adding a mask to remove our background and then we added an adjustment layer with hue and saturation again with a mask so it only applies to a certain area. And again these are non-destructive edits. I can always right click over here on my Stonehenge layer. I can disable my layer mask and you'll see where we took the Stonehenge originally from on that other picture. The background still exists. We have not removed it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, enable the layer mask again and there's our image. And finally we can actually bring our layers together into one. If you recall when we were working on the Stonehenge image and we first brought it together while well, Photoshop brought it together for us, we had three separate layers and then we merged them. Merging is a destructive edit and if we chose to do that now we wouldn't be able to go back and edit later. So there is another option. Let me make sure my hue adjustment is selected on the thumbnail, the layer thumbnail is selected rather than the mask thumbnail. And I'm going to select Control Alt Shift and the letter E. On a Mac it would be Option Control Shift E. When I do that it creates a new layer at the top of my stacking order and if I hide all the other layers by clicking the visibility icons you'll notice that I have a new layer with my image on it where it's been flattened into a single image, into a single layer. So that again was Alt Control Shift and the letter E. On a Mac it would be Option Control Shift E and that merges your layers instead of making a layer that compresses all of them into one like we did on the Stonehenge. It creates a new layer at the top of our stacking order and puts all of our visible layers onto a new layer. And then we can continue to work with this picture or we can then you know move this into another image if we wanted to work on it or make any other other types of adjustments to it. But if we change our mind we can always go back and make changes down here where our layers still exist so we've created a non-destructive edit by creating a new layer with our Stonehenge on our cliff.